Hi there, my name is Abigail Jonas, and this is my educational timeline and just a little bit of, of the background of why I chose education. So where it all started, I would have to say that it started way back when I was in elementary school. I was always the student that waited for the end of the year for the teachers to go through their cabinets. Um, I'm sure my parents loved it when I brought everything home, but I would always be the one that takes the extra work, the old notebooks. Um, and I, then my little sister and I would play school during the summer. And it, I feel like that is where my passion for wanting to teach really came from. And then moving around the state of Kansas and Oklahoma, I fell. Um, I ended my high school career at Great Bend High School back in 2011. And I remember moving there and they had this program. Um, it was Future Educators of America. And it was a program based around students that wanted to become educators. So they were placed in classrooms. They were given tasks, um, observing. They were I was able to teach small groups all through my two years at Great Bend. And then my senior year, um, I took on my first leadership role and became the president of the Future Educators. And I was able to work alongside the main teacher. And she kind of showed me how... You organize people, um, what's best for each individual, how to accommodate. So really just a good leadership practice uh, for seven years. Along with that, I worked at the Great Bend Rec Center. I taught children of all ages in rec classes. I coached. I organized kids multiple times a week, it seemed like, in sports and craft classes. So really just kind of getting my feet wet in what it's like to teach and be the leader of a group of children. After or after high school, excuse me, I went to Fort Hay State, and believe it or not, I knew education was what I wanted to do, but when I got to Fort Hayes, I thought, I'm going to do something new. Uh, I really thought HHP was my, the human health and performance was really going to do it for me. I wanted to run my own rec center, and then I realized that I was, I was missing something, and uh, I switched back to education one semester in at Fort Hayes, and I have not yet looked back. After I graduated from Fort Hayes, I applied back in my hometown of Great Bend for a first or third grade position, and through my student teaching, through everything, I've always been placed with that preschool, kindergarten, and I thought, I'm going to get out of kindergarten, and I'm going to do first and third. Well, needless to say, there was some fate involved, and what I applied for and did not work out, and I was able to, um, I was offered the kindergarten position where I had happily taught for seven years, and last year in May, I was given an opportunity to uh, switch roles at Jefferson, and I took on an instructional coach role where I oversee the technology library and the mentoring teacher side of things. Um, it's really taught me a lot on how to work more with adults rather than students, which is a, it is a challenge sometimes. Uh, and then in August, we all reported back to school, and I was nervous about taking on the instructional role, and I decided to also take on two elementary schools in my first year. So now I oversee Jefferson Elementary and Park Elementary as an instructional coach, uh, I work with both of their buildings with tech alongside their teachers um, and their libraries with budgeting, pretty a wide variety of things that I really cover. Um, then this year in December, I got called to the office and our family engagement coordinator, which is the person that interacts a lot with the parents, gets them involved, um, organizes an after school um, program along with some evening programs. So a lot more of your individual leadership. She had to step out, and so I decided to accept the position on top of my two elementary schools. So needless to say, some of the stress levels some days are quite high, but we are learning to manage, and um, a lot of people are, I don't want to say underneath me, but work alongside me now. Uh, so early on in my educational path, I actually added in the extras way before I started teaching. So I started coaching at Great Bend High School while I was a junior in college um, at Fort Hayes. I took online classes full-time and coached um, softball. So back in 2014, I started coaching for the high school. 
Uh, they took a chance on me, and I guess it paid off a little bit, I hope. Uh, I coached for the high school from 2014 to 2020, and then I decided to step away from athletics, and I was going to just focus on my career a little bit. And then in August 2020, I got called back to the high school and was pretty much given 20 minutes, and they offered me a volleyball job. And I figured it was my calling to be back in the sports world, and so still coaching. Um, when it comes to the district levels, I was asked to join the supplemental salary um, and since 2018. So I have been working alongside our athletic director and the superintendents and a bunch, a wide variety of people that represent multiple levels throughout the school district. And we work on the budgets that people or the salaries that people get when they coach. And then I'm also on the district level math curriculum committee. Uh, I have presented to the board. That has been a good experience. Building level wise, I'm on the building leadership team. Um, I have headed, I have been the head of Stuco for a couple years, which is good with organizing students. And then I'm also a part of the mentorship program. And so that really allows me to get to help teachers and try to get them on the right path. Then some extra activities. Um, I created a program called Books and Braids back in August of 2016 where students um, can come in in the mornings, and I have three volunteer teachers who help me. We have some sponsorships who donate items, and little girls will read to us while we braid their hair. Picture day is most common, um, often fought over. And then I'm also on the Capturing Kids Hearts leadership team who help guide the um, building of relationships between teachers and students within our elementary schools. So that has given me a good outlook on how important relationships are. And then really the thing with taking the next step, um, in July of 2021, I received a phone call from Fort Hayes, and it was about when I inquired about um, the administration program, and I had kind of pushed it off for a year. I got the phone call and decided, I looked at my husband, and I was like, we're just going to do it. Like, it's time. I need to renew anyway. Um, and so we just went for it. And then in August 2021, I enrolled in my first college class. Um, it was community relations, and I quickly um, uh, really enjoyed that class and the relationship building that it talked about, and I knew I was taking the right step. So I decided that I was going to get this done, and I accomplished three classes my first semester, so which was supervision, intro to administration, community relations, and I felt good about it, so I decided that I was really going to push on. I was going to get this done as fast as I can. So I decided to take an intercession class, um, and I enrolled in cultural diversity. In spring and summer, I planned classes. Um, my planned classes for the spring were the special education for administration, school law, and building finance. I had heard from friends that those were some tough classes, so I really had to push myself through on those. And then my summer classes, because I was so close to being done and I wanted my goal of to get done in a year and a half, I was close. My summer classes, I decided to take ethics and data analysis. And then in August 2022, I planned to complete, or I completed, excuse me, the action research class and then the advanced curriculum and development. And then I finally reached where we are at now. Um, and we are starting the practicum, which has been enjoyable so far. Lots of questions, but we are working through it. My ePortfolio, I did an overview of the ePortfolio when I was added to the class. Um, but due, really due to the stress, I'm not going to lie, due to the stress of being a mom and a full-time teacher at that point and a full-time college student, I didn't really want to start on projects until this fall when I kind of had a little bit more time and a kind of a better understanding of what college was like again. It's hard when you step away and come back, especially with kiddos. Um, when it comes to completing the e-portfolio, the e I have been working full speed at this, um, getting those hours, activities in, trying to get that bibliography going. Um, I have been completing a lot of activities and documenting them since the start of school. And then when it comes to moving to administration, so originally when I started this um, this slideshow, my current my plan was to obtain my license and spend a few years as an instructional coach. Um, 
and now I'm applying for a, I should say now, excuse me, now I'm applying for an administration position within our district um, as the principal of our new pre-K special services building, so I'm hoping I can really put in a good interview and maybe get a chance at that. Retirement. I'm going to be honest with you, I come from a family that doesn't retire. Uh, we are a farming family, so I don't really know what retirement is. Um, but when it comes to it, um, I don't have an age. I think as long as I am happy and healthy and enjoying education, I will stay in it as long as I possibly can. Thank you.